I'm Zaid Pixley, Professor Emerita at Kalamazoo College. This season, I'm writing the program notes for the Gilmore and giving pre-concert talks at Chenery Auditorium. On January 13th, the Gilmore Rising Stars series will present Russian pianist Nikita Mendoyans. He will play three sonatas by Haydn, Beethoven, and Brahms, and an intermezzo of his own composition. I'd like to talk about Brahms' piano sonata, Opus 5. In 1853, a 20-year-old Brahms knocked at the door of Clara and Robert Schumann in Dusseldorf, Germany. He was a little frightened. Clara was an internationally known concert pianist and a composer, and Robert Schumann was one of the most famous composers in Europe and a groundbreaking music journalist. Clara and Robert invited Brahms in, they asked him to play, and they were completely overwhelmed. Robert called him a genius. Clara wrote about him glowingly. He was almost a new messiah. Brahms was introduced to the musical world with a splash. At that time, he was working on his sonatas. He wrote three. This one, Opus 5, was written in collaboration with the Schumanns. He and Clara began a lifelong friendship that lasted until her death in 1896, and Brahms died a year later. He stayed with Clara and sustained her through Robert Schumann's illnesses and hospitalizations and his death in 1856. Brahms had quite an introduction then. He was referred to as a Beethovener, the young Beethoven, and he was expected to write Beethoven's 10th symphony. What a responsibility. Instead, Brahms focused on his keyboard music and did not write a symphony until he was 40. At age 20, he worked on his symphonic ideas, putting them into his piano music. Schumann referred to his piano sonatas as piano symphonies. Brahms was a big pianist, and he wrote big piano music. One day, Clara heard someone playing the piano. She thought Brahms had invited a friend in, and they were playing four hands at one keyboard. When she went into the room, she discovered that it was just Brahms himself drawing big fistfuls of notes out of the keyboard. And it's a challenge for the pianist to make the melody sing out of the sometimes very thick texture. Now we're looking at a picture, a wanderer above a sea of fog, by the German romantic painter Kaspar Winter. It shows romanticism at its most extreme. Here is the lonely, heroic adventurer looking out on this mysterious landscape, wondering what lies on the other side. Brahms shows us this in his music, which is searching and seeking, dramatic, heroic, very romantic, and also the opposite, intimate, heart-rendingly beautiful, extremely moving. We hear the dramatic Brahms in the first movement of his piano sonata, Opus 5, which is the heroic Brahms, the young Brahms, but yet unmistakably himself. The piano comes in with a great crash. You can hear that this music is very important in its heroic, long, short, long rhythms, racing up and down the keyboard, a virtuoso and a challenging piece. The work goes on in four more movements. It's a fast opening, a slow movement, a country dance scherzo in the middle, another inserted slow movement, and then a big finale. We won't hear, but you can listen to the slow movement of Brahms Opus 5 on January 13th. Brahms has a poem printed at the top of the score that refers to two lovers in a sweet embrace, looking out on a beautiful landscape, romantic nature landscape, looking at the moonlight. He sets this perfectly to music with a drooping, incredibly gorgeous melody and rich harmony. This is big music for a big pianist. 
I will see you there on January 13th where we hear Russian pianist Nikita Mendoyans, who is exactly the right person to play this wonderful work. I'm Zaid Pixley. Thank you for listening. <laughs>